Have you ever got frustrated while searching a file or a folder in your desktop or laptop? Whether it is a Mac, you know, Windows, Linux, or any operating system, they still take a couple of seconds. In worst cases, they take minutes too. But on the other hand, when you search something in Google, the results pop up very faster. And you guys know the scale at which Google works. They basically crawl billions of web pages and they do store in their computers. And when you search something, it's not just a word. When you search a sentence also, they were able to find all the you know, web pages which has those keywords in the matter of milliseconds. But why does our computer take you know, more than seconds or sometimes minutes to search for something which we have locally? But Google, when we search from our laptop, it basically executes the query in the remote computers or servers, and then they were still able to get the results faster. And you might say that they have cached the results, but that's true. But still, even if they don't cache it, the search is pretty fast and you will get you know, results in, in the matter of milliseconds. But how? You may say that Google uses supercomputers or powerful servers at their end to search one specific document among billions of documents. But that's not true because they also use commodity you know, computers like the desktop which you have at your home. But still, how are they able to do that? Of course, they have so many uh, computers at their end to power their search results. But still, how they were able to search a specific web page among billions of web pages when your computer is taking a couple of seconds to search a file among very few thousands of files. So not just Bing or Google or Yahoo or any other search engines. There are so many other systems like Elasticsearch, Solar, or Lucene is available where you can use these systems or frameworks in your project and build a very good search engine for your project using these technologies. In this video, I'm going to explain the underlying data structures and the process which basically powers these search systems. Searching is basically the process of information retrieval. So any search system we build has to fulfill two important criteria. The first one is being low latency and the second one is high throughput. What does low latency mean? It means that whenever we search something, the search results should be obtained very faster as soon as possible, like Google, right? The second thing is throughput. That means the system should be able to answer a lot of queries at any given point of time. That means that even though there are thousands or millions or billions of users are searching um, some queries in that system, the system should be still be able to answer to all of them. And of course, there is a scalability issue and everything, but still it should be scalable. Let's go to the basics of searching. Suppose in your computer you have, there are like N number of files. Now let's take this N to 100, okay? There are 100 files. Now, when you search for some keyword, say for example, you're trying to search for a word called a ThinkPad in all of these files. Basically, these are text files and these files have so many, so many words inside of them. Now, you are actually trying to search this keyword called a ThinkPad and your computer should be able to find all the files in which ThinkPad appears one or more times. Now, how does computer do it? Does it? Computer, if it is like a primitive computer, what it does is a computer or a program which basically search, what it does is it basically has to iterate through all of these 100 files and search for this particular word inside these files. Basically, it has to go to the first file, open it, and search for this uh, word, ThinkPad, if it exists in the corpus or uh, in any of the text inside that file. If it's not, it just closes it. If it is there, it just adds into a list of search results. Basically, if it is a search results, so if it document one can consist ThinkPad, basically adds that document name into the result. Basically, consider this is result. And if second doesn't, third doesn't, like whatever, basically, it will basically keep on appending the search results, say 500, whatever. So this is the result. Now, basically, how much time it will take? You know, um, file operations are much costlier. So computer, when it opens and closes, opens and closes all of these files, it takes a lot of time, right? That's why your computer is slow, but not really. So there are a little more optimizations to it. What it is, 
basically the program which is responsible to search anything in your computer or basically any word or any file or any folder in your computer what it does is at free time or when the computers are idle these programs basically index these files what is an index uh, or indexing means indexing is a pre-processing basically um, instead of explaining how actually it does on these files, I'm going to explain what is indexing. Then what is indexing? Index basically helps you to identify a resource based on some identifier. Say for example, a simple example is you basically take any arrays or dictionaries in Python or you know um, lists and dictionaries. Say you have a list called as x equal to so a, b, c, and d. So how do you basically identify this particular resource? So x of one is basically pointing to b. So this is an identifier, and basically this is kind of indexing also. This is a very basic um, representation. Um, basically in databases, when you basically index a particular column, say some ID or something, um, so you have one, two, three, four, Basically, you do the indexing operation on top of this. When you search some row by ID, say for example, you're trying to search a row with ID three, in that case, you don't need to go one by one linearly, like one, okay, we found two, we found three. Basically, you don't need to do order of N operation. Basically, upon indexing, you basically can find an order of one. That's like, uh, you, you, you basically give the ID, and then you your database, can easily find the address or the location where this particular row with ID three is present. So that's what the advantage of indexing. But how does they work? They use something called as B tree and all the stuff. But I'm not going to explain all of that because it's uh, it itself um, you know deserves a separate video. But just um, for your curiosity, you can learn about B trees and indexing stuff, how NDB it all happens. But this video's focus is more about how search indexing basically works. So in this case, our program should basically index all of these files so that whenever I search some keyword, it can basically easily figure out which particular document contains this word, ThinkPad. So it has to do some kind of pre-processing. When your computer is not in use or even though when your, when your computer is has been used, this program, basically the search program can do indexing and then it keeps the metadata somewhere so metadata so that it, it when, whenever you search for something it doesn't basically go to the documents to search which file has this word it basically search at the metadata to figure out which file has it so basically that's what even the search engines does they the search engine is this program it doesn't actually go and look into each and every document which you have crawled in case of Google, which you have crawled, but instead it basically looks into the metadata or the index data to figure out which documents or the document file name or the document IDs in which this particular word exists. And that is what we're going to learn in this video. So before understanding the indexing, let's also understand the basic uh, building blocks of any you know search engine say there is three main steps to it the first thing is crawling second is indexing and third is basically the query part of it so crawling is the process of fetching all of the different web pages from all over the internet um, google has a distributed crawlers basically they call it a spider what it does is uh, it is kind of distributed that means that so many computers are basically crawling over different sites uh, using links provided by robot.txt or links which are available in the pages. So they basically keep crawling all of the pages and store it into some persistent storage. And then all of these files will be fed into indexer. What indexing does is what we are going to learn. Basically, it, it basically does this indexing process on all of the web pages, which basically the crawler has crawled. And then it is going to emit the metadata uh, into some kind of persistent storage. And then basically the query is going to um, happen. Basically, it's, it's not exactly this way. Um, you can think of the query is going to be performed from here. Um, so who does the query? Users or any other systems who wants to see the results is the one who issues the queries using the query system. 
there are so many different ways uh, in which the queries also work, and let's discuss that about that as well. So the query is going to look into the metadata and then it's going to give the results to the users. So this is what it's all about. Okay, now our goal is to build a search engine or search system with you know less latency, high throughput, and near real-time capabilities to search on a very big data or uh, very or so many files or so many textual files or web pages or whatever. So Let's take an example. For example, we have three documents. We don't have so many because it would be difficult for me to show examples. So let's only consider we have three different documents with this text, okay? Now, I'm gonna explain a little bit about DB because that's important. So if it was DB, what you would have done? So if you wanna you know, build a search engine using DB, simply you basically make two columns, one ID and one for the content, right? So this all goes into ID. This all goes into content uh, column, basically. So I don't want to write it, so I'm just going to grab it. So this is ID, this is content. So how do you search? You basically use like operators and you use percentiles uh, and all the underscores for the placeholders to find any words inside this particular um, you know, content. So that works, but it is not so efficient when there are so many documents in it the DB will not perform as expected, like low latency and high throughput. So it's not possible. So how do we solve this problem? So I'm going to introduce to a concept called as inverted index. So let's see how this inverted index table, or this is actually called as term document matrix or term document table is basically built. Now, as I've already mentioned, there are three documents with us. In this document, there is a syntax, and in this document, there is a different syntax and another one different. So if you see, there are so many words are repeating and so many are kind of like unique. So now to build the term document matrix, first and foremost thing we need to do is read the document and then start marking them. Say for example, initially, I will start with an empty table, but just to save time, I have already filled it. So initially, this table will be empty. So now I'll go through the sentence and I'm going to take the words from the sentence and then start building the matrix. Okay, now what are we going to do? In the first document, we have the quick brown, uh, sorry, the quick brown fox jammed over the lazy dog. So the first word in that sentence is the. So write the. Oh, the is not there. Why? Because if you see, the the v doesn't really matter to us. It is basically a article, right? So in a document, there'll be so many the. So if someone search the in Google, what do you basically get it? So this is what. But in our search engine, does we really need to support searching for these kind of articles and uh, all of that nonsense stuff? Not really because we want to provide a meaningful search, so we only should consider the meaningful words are among the documents. Like, for example, quick brown fox jumped and lazy over and down. So we have to remove the, the, right? So there are two of these. And in this case, quick brown fox leap over the box in. We don't want this. And in this case, we don't want the and the. So what are these colors? These are basically called as stop words in natural language processing. So before um, we basically build this table, we have to do some pre-processing on the data. So first we need to remove all the stop words. For example, the stop words are like I, me, my, must, you, etc., yours, ours, etc. So the, these kind of words, we don't really need it. So we have to remove all of them. So there are so many libraries in every language uh, in NLTK package where you basically tell which language you want to remove the stop words, it basically removes the stop words in the given document. So you just need to remove all of the stop words, all of these things are gone. So basically, we are kind of removed this, we removed this in this particular document. Okay, now there are still more pre-processing is required. Say for example, so if you see, there is word called as quick here, quick here, and then there's quickly. According to the meaning, Basically, these three words are same, right? It's just the tens are difference. 
quick, quick, quick. All of them are, which basically gives the same meaning, but if you see, the letters in this word is different, this word is different. So for computer, it doesn't really care about it, so it treats these two as different words. But for search, we do have to consider all of these three words are same. So what do you have to do? So we have to do something called a stemming and lemmatization. So I'll, I'll talk about nonstimal later. So stemming is a process of basically removing the suffixes to get the you know base word or the actual core word in the given words. Say in case of uh, quickly and quick, quick. If you use the if you if you remove the suffixes, you basically get uh, so the suffix in this word is ly. So we basically could get quick. In this case, there is no suffix. In this case, there is no suffix. So when we do the stemming, we basically get the word quick, quick, quick. So this sentence basically becomes the, fo the fox quick jumped over the bridge. Um, so when we run uh, the stemming, jump will also become jump. So that is one technique that is called a stemming. It's a kind of rudimentary process in which you basically simply remove the suffixes. You don't really care about the resulting word is a real meaningful word. We basically stripping this suffix down to get a root word, um, but the word might not be meaningful. Uh, to give an example, just we have an example called a struggle, troubling, and troubled. In this case, if we do run stemming, we basically this doesn't have any suffix, uh, but still it will treat as e as suffix and then ing, ed. So what we actually get is trubl. So we don't get the e, uh, not not exactly the troubled word. Um, but in case of lemmatization, this process basically is a little laborious, uh, whereas, whereas this process actually requires a lot of metadata to do this process. Um, this process basically understand the every word of English, and it also has um, understanding of all the tense of the word. So this process basically gives the actual root word. So when we run on this, we basically uh, get the trouble. Uh, basically, the results might differ, but the, but the underlying concept is uh, correct. Um, so, lemmatization is always safe. We basically get the actual word. Um, so, in this case, um, uh, there's little no examples in this case, so it's fine. So, we basically have to run stemming and lemmatization to remove the suffixes and the tense to get the root word. So, that's one good step. So, next thing is we have to do noise removal. What is noise removal? So in the text, basically, this doesn't have any noise. In case of when Google crawls the web pages, there will be tons of noise in it, say, for example. Um, but definitely hashtags, URLs, um, you know, hyperlinks, um, some, some kind of like random noises, we'll have to remove them also because if we consider all of them, it, doesn't, it may not be a proper implementation. But it's all up to your use cases. If you want to consider hashtags, you can still consider, okay? So after running all of these things, our documents are clean. Now we have removed all the noise. So basically this is gone. So we have to consider only, we'll, we'll have only the proper words. Now we'll have to build the term document matrix. How do we build it? Let's go with one by one, words one by one. So we get the quick brown fox. So we have to consider the first word quick and we have to mark in which documents it basically presents. So quick, if you see, it is present in the document one, so we'll have to mark. And quick is present in document two. Quick here also, and quick here also. So instead of doing this way, you basically do this way. So first you see the word quick. So I recorded quick, and I marked this here, under document one. So there will be n number of columns, which is equal to n number of documents we have uh, to be indexed. So in our case, we have three documents. So we have three different columns in the table and we have one column dedicated for tongue. So there'll be only one unique entry for a unique word. So quick is present in doc one. So next thing is brown, write down the brown, present market here, um, and then go to dog because, okay, so there is fox. The order is a little messed up, but it's fine. You basically take all the unique words this is done, and then you mark in which document uh, these words are present. In this case, say for example, dog, this presented in document one and document two, document two 
but not in document three. So if you search it here, dog is present in document one, dog is present in document two, because of lemmatization or stemming, dogs has become to doc, dog. So, so we are marked in doc one, doc two, but if you see dog is not there. Uh, similarly, fox is present in all the three documents, basically fox, fox, and fox. And let's take bridge. Bridge is only present in document three, because bridge is not here, bridge is not here, bridge is here in the document three, so we have marked it here. So this is what it is called as term document matrix. How does this index table will help us to search faster? So let's see. If you want to search uh, for some word and find all the documents where um, the, the, that word is present, it's very simple now. So if I want to search for, say, quick, which of the documents do I have in my computer or do I have in all of the pages I have scrolled, you just need to refer to this table. Search for quick and then see all the columns in which we have marked. It's that simple. So we go to quick, we, we basically get all of this row, and then we basically say, it is present in doc one, doc two, and doc two. Similarly, let's see, maybe let's search for jump. Jump, let's search for jump, we go to jump, and then we get that row, we know doc one and doc two. So it is much faster than opening a file, looking at it, and then opening a file, look for jump, open file, look for jump. So this is much, fa much faster, right? So that's what the performance um, advantage of having this table. So this is what the metadata I was referring, where in the search engine basically refers to this index metadata and it gives the result instead of looking into the actual documents. Now, all good, but is this how the search engines work? Not really. Because if you see, the problem with this is we are basically creating a table. Each table, each column, and each cell is going to take a lot of space because this is a table and this is a data type. Like you basically have either one or zero uh, if it is a bit. But if you create a table, if you use a database table, this will be too much of uh, data. So the storage space is too much. Um, that's why there are so many tricks available. Um, like instead of having the column, you can actually have a binary representation of it. So instead of having, you know, this as an integer data type or Boolean data type, so instead you can do quick, and then you map it to just a bit representation. So if it is one in the position one, talk to one, one. So this is the data. So for brown, it will be one, one, zero. This is the binary representation of it. So using one simple number, we're basically able to store a lot of information. So that's kind of possible. It's like a compression technique in which you basically save all of this information of which uh, document this word exists in the bitwise format. You basically know now exactly in the first bit, um, I mean, basically from the, from the left side, you will see how this document has it, this document has it, and this document. In this case, this, this, but not this. So that's how you can actually basically use it. But this has limitations. So we have different representation of indexing. So now I have built a different representation of the term document um, table. In this case, we are also capturing frequency and the occurrences in terms of inverted indexes. Now, how this table is built, I'm going to explain. So I couldn't be able to write all of this because it's too much of data. So I've just written about a uh, few words. So let's take quick. So how many times quick has appeared? So it's basically three. So it had to keep the total number of occurrence count here. So basically, as and when you index the documents, if you see more than once, you basically keep incrementing this value and then keep updating this value as well. How it is built? So initially it will be zero and this is empty. I mean, basically this is all, all of this data belongs to the quick. So initially it will be zero and this is empty. So now when we see the first time quick in this document, I'll have incremented by one and then basically I'll show you that. So I it by one and then add this document only. This is not there, okay? This is not there. So what this represents? 
this is a multi-dimension array so and heterogeneous as well so this first one will tell you uh, document id and the total number of uh, uh, you know, occurrences so basically this is the um, one array that means that the first value will tell you that this uh, word is appeared in document one and this is the position so document one and position two so quick is present in one and two so that's position two and this is document one so okay now when we check it over here there is no other appearance of quick so there's only one value over here so if just just for the sake of example if there was one more word quick uh in document one in the end basically one two three four five six seven eight nine ten tenth position so we will we would have had something like 10 okay but unfortunately in the example we don't have that so i don't want to you know modify the example so so basically so only two will be here okay now you got the point or the idea of how i did it so the second document quick is present in the first position so increase it by one so two in the second document it is present in the first position and nowhere else so there's one only one representation and in the third document also the i see quick is there so there are three appearance and then where in the third document in the third position so one two three so basically this is up so similarly you will have to build for all the unique um, you know words in the example documents or you want to index um, you basically end up getting this kind of table so now whenever you want to search something basically you want to search quick you basically go here um, so this um, so basically you can keep a map hash map uh, in python basically a dictionary or basically index with the help of index you can go to this pointer much faster in r of one right so if i want to search for brown you can go directly to brown and the values in this data is say it tells you how many times in all of the documents it is present basically two and where this value this data will give you that representation in the first document in third position it is present in the second document it is present so the same trick will be used even in case of when you search uh, any word in the ebook apps so basically when you search for some word this kind of indexing would have performed on all of the pages of the ebook and then as soon as you search something the results will basically highlight all of these words in a color or something like that so basically using this kind of information the same information you can actually use it to basically show the search page on uh, your application using this data basically this is what the lucene solar and Elasticsearch, even google and all of the search engines actually has um, in its core um, of the framework uh, it's all inverted index is what it is doing now because of the space constraint i have uh, deleted the table and i've just um, written the result which i'm going to use it for example so now let's discuss about the query or search now we created the metadata information and now how do we basically retrieve the information i just showed you uh, the single word retriever right say for example how to get the result for quick or brown or fox you had the data you can just directly show the result but search doesn't um, search is not always limited to one word so in google you basically type the complete sentence i've seen people typing the complete sentence how do i do this or whatever so you don't need to do type all of that the keywords are very important but irrespective of that you basically allow uh, in your search system to enter more than one word so how to how to hand how to handle that so in that case uh, let's take an example so if i want to search for a quick brown fox in the metadata we have how does this work there are two strategies to it one is conjunctive and destructive uh, query Conjunctive is basically an operation. Basically, I'm expecting all of these words, quick, brown, fox. We had the results for quick separately, brown separately, and fox separately in our table. So now I'm expecting all of these words to be present in some documents, and I'm very interested on that, those documents only. Not the documents which only have quick, not the document which only have fox. First, I'm really interested in the documents which have all of these words, 
And later on, I'm kind of interested in the documents which have two words, later one words, right? Google also does the same thing. It orders based on that and also by page rank and all of this stuff. For simplicity purpose, let's think we'll order the pages or results by most uh, occurrences, okay? So conjecture query is basically doing and operation of all the results of the individual words. Basically, we had the result for individual words, basically I've written over here. So we have to take the result of quick, we have to take the result of brown, we have to take the result of fox. Now what we need to do is we have to do intersection of it. So intersect all of this result to produce only few results, which actually contains all of these words. Basically, conjunctive query basically gives only the documents which have all these three words in them. So that is what is called as conjunctive queries. Whereas in distinctive queries, we basically take results from all of them and then just do the union operation or just combine all of them. So we just combine all of them and then result um, the output. It doesn't really care about um, you know, which document has all of these three words present or doesn't matter. This result, uh, the distinctive result also contains the document which have just the quick, just the brown, just the false, or just some words or just all of those words. So that's what these two uh, kind of queries. But if you think about the order at which these words appear also is kind of important, right? So we are not really interested in the document which have basically um, if there is a document which has fox, brown, quick, does it really make sense? I don't think so, but some, in some instances, the, the position of the words also matters. So not just conjunctive, um, you know, we'll have to do some little more perf you know, operations or some kind of processing to, to get the documents which have the same ordering as well. And I mean, how to do that? I mean, it's also pretty easy. We just need to figure out you know, or find out all the documents which have um, the, the positions, which is in the increment order. So basically when we do the uh, conjunctive query on all of these documents, then we'll have to find out um, you know, the documents in which the positions are kind of like increasing order. Say for example, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll show you one example over here. So in the first um, document, we have quick brown fox. Uh, in the second document as well, we have the quick brown fox. But here we just have fox quick. So this is not the valid one, but these two. How to figure out these two? Um, you know, sometimes when, do, when we do the pre-processing, these uh, words will go out, so positions might go out. But even if you're tracking these things, the positions will uh, have an increasing order. I mean, because sometimes it happens so that quick of uh, or the in between, when you pre-process, um, I mean, those positions would have been affected. But in this case, we are considering all of that, so the positions um, uh, doesn't really matter. Um, so if, if you're okay with, uh, you know, some words being in some articles or something in between these things, and still it's a valid keyword, uh, you can just take the increasing order. I will show you that. So, so where is it? So quick brown fox. If you see there's two, three, four, that means that they are just next to each other. In the first document itself, in the document one is here also, document one, document one. So quick brown fox appears in three document, uh, I mean, same document that is one, 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 right? So, but now we are really worried about the order. So two, three, and four, okay? So that means that the order is kind of increasing. That means that Quick is present in the first document at position two. And then the brown is present in the first document itself in the position three. That means that they're next to each other, two, three. If the fox is next to brown, that means the value should have been four. So if you see here, fox is exactly at four. That means that these three words are in the same order. That means these results are much more relevant than the any other results because we found a document in which the same order, same words are present in the same order. So that's what we, we're going to figure out. There are so many different tricks in which um, we can figure out. Um, even though in some cases, say for example, um, if there was a word, um, 
say in some document, maybe in here, if there was a word in between, quick, uh, off, or somewhere. In that case, maybe, uh, yeah, the brown position in here would have been, in here would have been not two, instead it would have been three because of, we just inserted off in between, right? So the brown position was three, okay? And fox position um, is four, okay? Now, if I check quick brown fox, um, now what happens? So in the second document, right? Second document is quick brown fox is there, but there's quick off brown fox. If, I, if our framework uh, wants to treat that also as a valid reason, how do we figure it out? So in here, if you see, um, in the second document, quick is present in position one, okay? Now, brown is present in the second document and in the position three, okay? Fox is present in the second document, but the position is four. So if you see, they're not really next to each other, but there is a mismatch. There is a gap in between, but um, this is not really, a, a, you know, exact match. They are not just next to each other, but the order is preserved. Quick is appearing first, brown is appearing afterwards, and then fox is appearing afterwards, not really next to each other. But we, can, we might can consider this as also, uh, you know, valid um, case of, so valid case, and we can include this also in result. You know, there are so many different ways we can uh, um, build our queries. Uh, it's all up to us and our use cases. So these are the some different kind of tricks um, you can use it to query. So I just wrote the table of turn, frequency, and inverted index uh, table once again, uh, but in a different way. So you will notice what it is. Um, so we just learned how do we search by a single word, basically word. Um, so so this, this table can be implemented using, you know, B3 or hash or, you know, try any of these data structures. So they all help you to uh, go to the location much faster. So if it is hash, you can just go to the index. Um, you basically get the hash and then figure out the position and then go here. So it's like R of one, right? So any word can be figured out or the result for any word can be fetched using R of one. So that's much faster. Uh, single word is much faster. And then we just learned con you know, how to get the uh, disjunctive and conjunctive um, results uh, with the you know, position as well. So now there is one more use case we just um, figured out. So how do we search something with just by prefix or suffix? Um, let's take, um, I want to find uh, you know, a word with um, just uh, something like J U M star. So I don't care what is there in this part. I just want to find um, a result for um, for this query. Basically, I have J U M star, and I just need to find all the documents in which this kind of uh, query holds good. So how do we do that? For that, we also make sure that this table, uh, while we're while we're building this table, we just need to keep these keys in a sorted manner. So what is the advantage of doing this? Say in this case, you can notice that brown, dog, fox, gent, lazy, over, you can see B, D, F, J, L, and O. So all the keys are kind of sorted in this table. The advantage of that is now we can do binary search on the keys. So if I wanna search for gem, I just need to go to the midpoint. So F, okay, I know, I have to go this way. So half of this, maybe if I come here, L, so I need to go back. So you basically go here and then I find J and then you basically keep doing that if you have so many words with J, but in this case, I don't, I just have one word. So I basically search it. I have J U M. I don't care what is there later. So I found the key and I found the result. So if I have multiple words with J U M, something else, all of that um, keys, are considered for the results. So in this case, I just have gem. So this result is, will be provided back. So that's how we can get the results for prefixes as well. 
And there are other queries like like crazy queries are there. So something like star. Um, okay, let's take AZ. AZ and star. So I don't care what is there in like as a prefix and what is there as suffix. I just want all the return me all the results for this query. So any word which contain AZ in the middle. So these kind of results, you know, you know, searching is a little tedious always. Um, but nevertheless, in the English, we have only limited words. Maybe I think I don't know the exact count. I, I think I remember 10,000 words, if I'm not wrong, or 1,000 words. I don't really know. Um, maybe you just need to do linear search on the total document uh, because we just have 10,000 entry. Um, so you can find the result uh, with all the words with AZ, but that is like overkill. Um, there are other techniques like prefix try and then prefix array kind of implementation in which you can um, build another data structure um, to figure out uh, all the keys which basically matches these kind of you know, wildcard uh, searches. Um, but that's, let's not discuss that because that itself is like a big topic. Um, let's just, I think this much concept is much more uh, important to for you guys to understand. So when you want to search by prefix or suffix, you can just leverage um, the binary search. But the only thing is the table should be um, ordered in the alphabetical order. So that's how we can do this kind of search.